Hey guys, how's it going? So a couple of really exciting things for today. First off, you can see right behind me, we've got 22 of our three foot hay racks out ready to be planted. It's been a couple of years since we've done this project. Some of you guys might even remember when we had our little fence in front of the original property that we bought, we set up, I can't even remember how many, but Garden Artisans sent us out a ton of hay racks to put on our front, front fence line. And we just thought that that would be a really fun way to add a lot of color and it really did. And I know Aaron has been itching to get these out again and do this sort of project. And I think this is the perfect area. Standing back a little bit, you can see the three red point maples. They're doing really well, still fairly young though. So we figure that they're not gonna be in the way of too much light. I think they're gonna get plenty of sunshine out here. In fact, I put, you can see I put plants already in the hair racks, not planted yet, but I put ones that like a little bit more shade or could handle a little bit more shade on the east side of the maple so that maybe they'd be a little bit more protected in the afternoon. But the other exciting thing is that there's 22 hay racks out right here. 20 of these we're gonna be planting up with brand new varieties for next year, 2024. And then in the other two, I've got new varieties that came out this year that I was able to trial last year, but I thought it would be a fun way to just show how they grow on their own. We're planting up each hay rack with one type of plant. Um, so I'll put multiples in each pot, you know, like one three foot hay rack, I'll probably put three super tunias in this one. For things that stay smaller like terrenia, I will put five or seven, uh, just kind of based on their growth habit. I want them to be full and beautiful in the end, but I also want to be able to show you guys progression through the season, show you how each individual plant fills in, how it grows. I think it's gonna be a really fun way to try out all these plants rather than, you know, typically I, I mix them in with other plants or I throw them in the ground somewhere, which I will do with some of these plants because I'm not gonna use all of them in the hay racks, but just having them on their own, you can really see what they can do. So first off, I wanna show you how we connect these hay racks to our fence. Um, now you might be wondering like, does it stain the fence? Is it too heavy for the fence? And we wondered those same things when we started this project in the beginning and never had anything stain and we also didn't see any bowing this is a vinyl fence so it might be different based on what kind of fence you have that's that sort of thing if you're wanting to attempt a project like this uh, but we haven't noticed any adverse effects at all on our fence uh, and then we did custom these brackets i'm gonna go through the fence here gracious <laughs> okay Backside, you can see this bracket right here, which you can get these at the hardware store. The Simpson Strong Tie FB26, they're silver when you buy them, we painted them white to match the fence. And then it's just a menagerie of, there's a bolt, two nuts and a washer. And I'm just going to flip it the wrong way here just so you can see how it works. But uh, you just put it on the fence like that. And then your hay rack sits right in between the washer and the bracket right here. So you can see on this one, the hay rack sitting right there. And then on this side, there's the second. So that part is actually very inexpensive and was easy to put together. Now, Aaron and Paul, they were already out here clearly. You probably already saw that part of the project when they got all of these installed. And then they got this tubing, the poly tubing here, which is just half inch supply line right here. Uh, they got it attached to a zone, which is right underneath the shrubs over there. And what we'll do is once we've got this kind of all set, we're gonna bring the poly here and then we'll put an elbow coupler in, come straight up and then another elbow coupler and we'll run that black supply line all along the back side of all of these hay racks. So it'll come along here, it'll bump forward and then come around and then keep running the entire distance. And then we'll tap into that supply line with this quarter inch drip tubing. It has dripper spacing every nine inches. We have been using the brown drip tubing with the spacing every six inches because it was, it gave you the ability to use a shorter run of tubing, but the black does not show up quite as much. And I'm kind of leaning more toward this. So in the end, the tubing will be a little bit longer than if we used the brown stuff, but not by much. And I like the fact that it doesn't show. So anyway, we will show you that when we get ready to do it, but I wanna run along and show you all these plants before we get after the project. Also, look at the sky. It is gorgeous today. It's been sprinkling on and off and it's supposed to maybe pick up in a little while. I'm kinda of hoping to get this done before anything major comes through, but the weather has just been glorious. Starting on this end, I'm just gonna quickly go through, share the names and give you a close up look at the blooms. I have shown this one before because I used, you can see, I used some of these in another project already, but this is the Supertunia Bermuda Beach Improved. 
and I notice that it is a little bit more of a bright coral rather than a, the muted coral that the older one was. Oftentimes with the improved version, which some of these are, like there's a coconut nemesia here in a minute that's just an improvement on the older variety. Typically what that means is you either get better bloom coverage, better growth habit, just a more vigorous plant overall, better performance, that sort of thing. So anyway, I'm excited about the Bermuda Beach because the older one I did notice that it didn't hold up vigor wise to some of my other things and I'm very excited to see what it does this year. One thing I do notice with this one in particular and I noticed it with the older one as well, super tunias you do not have to deadhead them in order for them to keep blooming, they will just keep going for it, but this one I always feel like I need to. I feel like um, it makes the plant look a little bit cleaner. Next one is a sweet potato vine called Penny Lace. So you've got the nice deep color and kind of the interesting shape leaf. You can see I put this one in a little bit more protection of the tree just because it can take full sun, but it can also handle more shade. We are gonna be taking this branch and this branch off this tree because this is, like I said, where we park and we wanna make sure that we keep these limbed up as they grow. Those we've already done. I don't know how we missed this one, but we did. Here's the coconut nemesia right here. I've had really good luck with these. I always thought that they were the type that would fizzle out in the heat. And I mean, we'll see <laughs> this year because this one's just gonna be out here getting the brunt of it. Uh, but I have had really good luck with them holding through the summer. And I do think that this is a really beautiful with that bright yellow throat, really beautiful flower. Next one, uh, now I'm excited about this one. And you can see all of these are in the eco pots too, the new ones that are comp compost ready. So I'm not gonna leave them in the pots. We just aren't wet enough here and they won't compost fast enough. And I think their roots will be happier to be out of the cans. But I think the whole goal is that we're able to compost them so we can toss them out in our pile and that's fun. But the thing I'm excited about with this one is that we've got a mini Vista Ultramarine Super Tunia that will hopefully hold true to color. You know, I use the mini Vista Indigo a lot and I love that one, but it does take on three different colors of bloom. Whoop, I dropped one. Oh my goodness, oh, it's fine, <laughs> tough. So you'll see on that one, you know, deeper colors like this, but then you'll also see a lighter lavender and then almost like a, on the white side of lavender, all on the same plant, which is very fun, but sometimes in some applications, you want it to maintain the exact color that you planted. So I'm excited to see what this one does. And I think this one looks like it's gonna mound maybe a little bit more than like the Midnight, which I'll show you toward the end, which is a new one this year, not for next year. Uh, but that one seems to be like a strict flat grower. Uh, this one just looks like it might mount. We'll see. Next one is a new Superbina called Pink Cashmere. I just uh, love Superbinas to start off with. No spraying, no deadheading, no insect pressure, just like performs. I love it. I love the color of this. So like, look at this one right here. You can see when the buds come out, they're a deeper pink and then they're just this beautiful soft pink. And then we've got a super tunia called Hoopla Vivid Orchid. This is an interesting one. I'm so excited about this because you know, we've tried the Raspberry Rush, which I actually really love. There's the Mini Vista Pink Star. What's the other one? Am I missing one that's got the white and the pink? Anyway, I love that the margin is white rather than having a pink stripe up the uh, petal. I just think they look like, boop, they just pop, love it. Then we have a Super Tunia called Saffron Finch. So we're gonna be growing the Mini Vista Yellow again this year, which is a smaller yellow, yellow flower. But to have a Super Tunia, another yellow one that's a little bit more vivid than like the Limoncello, I think it's really nice. And I'm excited about the growth on this one. I'm hoping that it's a little bit more vigorous than limoncello, we shall see, but it's got a beautiful, deeper, more vivid throat, and then it kind of comes up to that nice soft butter yellow. Then a terenia, this is just an improvement. So this is the pink improved terenia, or wishbone flower. If you look inside, there is a wishbone detail. Maybe we can get a better picture of it than I can probably show right now. Uh, again, I put this one in a little bit more protected area. I think it will like that. So this is just a really good option if you've got shadier areas and you want some color and some drape, this is a good one. Okay, Super Bells, double white, gorgeous. Oh, I am branching out with the Super Bells this year. I've already put them in several of our other mixed containers, just hoping that one of these years, they're gonna love me back. <laughs> I don't know, I think maybe I overlove them with too much water. So maybe out here we can, can control things. You know, we'll put a certain amount of emitters, probably like six in each one of these hay racks, and then we're just gonna keep our eye on them. And then we can cut out emitters if we feel like things are a little bit too wet or we can add more if like the potato vine or something needs a little bit more. So that's the beauty of, the, of having 
just one variety in a container because you can control it based on what that variety wants. This though, I just adore the double flowers and I love the white. Okay, another super tunia. This is a mini Vista sweet sangria. Super vivid. It's like the jazzberry, but just smaller. That's what it feels like to me. Very vivid. Now, when I laid these out, I did try to go like white, pink, purple. There's kind of a reddish one, white foliage. I tried to break them up so that we didn't have a ton of, you know, too many colors together, but this is going to be pretty white, pink. And then the next one is a super bells. I think this just might be the blue improved. Yeah, blue improved. These will be pretty together. And these are the perfect color. And I love the ye little yellow throat. The next one is another super bina. This one is cherry burst. So the thing I like about this one, it's like kind of red, but kind of pink. And the white striping, I think, gives it, like lends it more of a pink color. It kind of tones down the amount of red in there. So I think you could use this one either way. You could use it in a warmer arrangement or you could put it in a cool arrangement. So you can see, like, look at this. That is just absolutely gorgeous. And then these, I'm wondering if these are just more aged. So they're a little bit more red when they're aged. And this one has more of a purpley pink vibe. Just beautiful. Then we have a Scovola. This is Whirlwind White. This is also just an improvement on an older variety. And Scovola is awesome, you guys. It's equally as awesome in the ground. Like this one performs every bit as good. I mean, maybe not as big as my Supertunias that I plant in the ground, but every bit as good as Supertunias in the ground. And I did not expect that. I think it was last year I popped some in the ground and I was very, very pleased. And then a coleus called Cherry Drop. Kind of like the chocolate drop, but cherry drop, more red in it, and it's got more of a trailing habit. So again, this one is in a little bit more shade. You can see the color there though, so, so pretty. And then this one I've already used some <laughs> in another container by the chicken coop actually, and this is a double. It's a sweet pink, what is it called? Smitten pink. It's just a very, very cool pink, and it's got that deeper kind of striping, now, not striping, it has like the circle in the center, deeper pink throat, with that ruffly center. I think it's just such a sweet flower. And then this one, not new for 2024, but new for this year, the Mini Vista Yellow. And I was so very excited when this one came out because you get kind of the same color as the Limoncello, kind of that softer look, but in a Vista. So it performs its head off. And I'm not joking. I mean, this one performs. I had it in the ground. I had it in containers last year, mixed containers with other things. And it didn't even matter where I put it. It just did well. It was even in one spot where it didn't get quite as much sun as some of my other things. And it was as full of bloom as the other ones that got more sun. And this one, once it gets going, it gets to a point where you can't even see green leaves. It's just yellow, just yellow blooms. Highly recommend. Then we've got a Super Bells Pink Improved. So improvement on an older variety. And that's just a nice, clear, bright pink with a yellow throat. And then a Biden's called Marshmallow, Campfire Marshmallow. I can't remember the growth stats of this one. Uh, this one's not gonna do the, the trailing thing, so this one will just be more of kind of like an upright arrangement. Uh, but I think it's really beautiful. And I like having the option of the white rather than a yellow. And it's a little bit more of like a filler look, an accent plant, that's the word I was looking for. And then this next one, you guys, I think this is gonna become a favorite of many. This is Super Bell's Double Vintage Coral. Look at the color on that. Oh my goodness. And then the more aged they get, the more smoky in color they get. This goes really well with a lot of the things that I like to plant. And then a James Britannia. So this is Safari Dusk. I've tried Safari Dawn, Safari Sky. The thing I did learn about this one, um, not this variety, this exact variety, but about the Dawn and the Sky is that don't put them with Supertunias or not too close to them because they don't have the vigor of a Supertunia. I put them in our big pots along the east fence line last year and they got just swallowed up by the Super Bina, Super, I said Bina, oh my gosh. Oh, it begins. Super Bina and Super Tunia. And it's just a little bit, again, more like an accent plant, but they like drier conditions. They like it hot. That's, uh, I think they're native to South Africa. And it took like 30 years to get varieties that performed to the standards that they wanted out of this plant. And I did have some alone in a container and they were beautiful and they did not take very much water. So if you're looking for some more um, water friendly flowers, this is a really good one. And then this one is the Supertunia Mini Vista Midnight. So the one that has a very like flat, let me see if I'm pulling out. Like, look at that. It's like, it's like a disc. It just grows out flat 
And I did notice that last year, I, I don't think I put this in the ground. I put it in a container with other things. Great spiller, but I'm excited to see on its own what it does in this hair rack. Like if it's by itself, will it mound up a little bit more? Gorgeous color though. It's such a deep purple, but then it has kind of this iridescent like glow to it as well. And then the very last one is a Super Bells called Double Redstone. So this one is yellow and red. It's the colors of my high school. But I like how the main part of the petal is red and then the margin is yellow. A little bit more yellow on the aged flowers right there, but that also gives it a little bit of a brightness. Like if it was all the way red, it would look more dark. But just that tiny bit of yellow in there just brings that light. And you guys, that is all 22 of the hay racks. That's what we're gonna be doing. So like I said, super bells don't grow quite as big as super tunias, so I'll probably do five. We'll probably do three, maybe seven. Uh, but I will go through in the end after I plant them and we'll just take a look. All right, so here we go, let's get them planted. done but oh my goodness it has been raining all day which is the hugest gift ever but it does make projects go a little bit slower so what I thought was gonna just be you know really quick yeah turned out taking a lot longer than I thought but they're all planted they're all very much so watered in by the rain I didn't even touch them with a the hose and right now it's like it's a little bit more than a sprinkle but it was pouring there like for hours it just poured rain awesome. I do want to show you a close-up of the water system here. Paul and Aaron came out here to set up the drip system and I went and watered the greenhouse and cleaned out the studio which needed it so so bad. Such good projects for a day like this. So they got it all done and everything yeah the water all run it's perfect. So you can see they brought the supply line over there's an elbow coupler and then up they came white zip ties so you don't see it quite as much. We could probably tuck that behind the fence a little bit better. Anyway it comes up it looks like they didn't put an elbow here they were able just to kind of bend it over the fence and then it just runs along the back side of these baskets and then somewhere along the line here you can see right here they went in with a quarter inch straight coupler and attached it to our drip line and then that runs down the basket and then comes back right here and that's where it ends so we can adjust that shorter or longer depending on each variety and how uh, much water we think that they need so let's just take a walk down and i will show you how many of each one of these ended up in each basket Bermuda Beach, I went with five because based on the performance of the older variety, I'm just kind of going from that because that's all I know of this one. And it just stays a little bit on the smaller side. This one may be way more productive, but we will see. Three of the sweet potato vine, penny lace. And then five, no, seven of the coconut nemesia or nemesia, however you want to say it. And then we've got three of the ultramarine super tunia. I did put a tag in each one of these, just in case we forgot what it is. Three of the Superbina Pink Cashmere, three of the Super Tunia Hoopla Vivid Orchid, which I did notice when the blooms age, this one was more open before the rain. They aged to kind of a lavender. See that right there? 
So it'll be interesting to see what kind of look this plant takes on because as the blooms age, if they turn more purple, we might have like a purple, pink, and white looking plant here. Three of the Supertunia Saffron Finch, seven of the Pink Improved Terenia, five of the Double White Superbells, oh, so pretty. Three of the Supertunia Vista Sweet Sangria, Mini Vista, that's what I meant to say. Five of the Super Bells Improved Blue. Three of the Super Bina Cherry Burst Improved. Five of the Scavola White Improved. Three of the Cherry Drop Coleus. Five of the Double Smitten Pink Super Bells. Three of the Super Tunia Mini Vista Yellow. Five of the Super Bells Pink Improved. Five of the Biden's Marshmallow. Five of the Super Bells Double Vintage Coral. There are five of the James Britannia. I was kind of thinking of doing seven, but I think five is going to do it. Three of the Super Tunia Mini Vista Midnight. And then five of the Super Bells Double. Gosh, I can never remember that one. Redstone. So here's a look back down this way. It's going to be a riot of color. It's going to be really fun to see how these all perform, how they do. I imagine that some of them will see like super big and drapey. Some may not be quite as much, but that'll be the fun of it. Just to see their progress through the season and really get to learn about these plants, their water needs, how they do in the sun and the wind. This is west. Our prevailing winds come this way and they can be strong. And these are protected by nothing. So we're gonna put them through the ringer. And you guys, that is gonna be it for today. I'm trying to stand under this tiny little tree canopy, refuge from the rain. It was so nice to be able to turn off our watering system though today. We won't need to water for a while because everything got so soaked. And it looks like next week we have three days of this on the forecast. I don't know if it will come to fruition, but if it does, awesome. <laughs> we're gonna love it. It looks like we get up close to 90 and then it's going to go back down into the mid 70s so it's just a very a very nice ease into june i mean i know what we're in for i know what's coming you know with our hot summers so just soaking this in i mean the fact that i could wear a vest and be actually kind of chilly like chilled at the end of may kind of amazing really so thank you guys so much for watching this video we will probably be giving you a lot of updates on these uh, we're trying to do garden tours more often so if, if we do a tour you know a couple times a month you'll get to see these every couple of weeks and if we don't put them in a tour I'll put them in another video uh, just so you guys can see it might be kind of fun to see like a week by week how much growth each one of these puts on so anyway thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video bye